it doesn't get any better than Voodoo Barbecue and Grill here in Metairie at 2740 Severn Avenue. The mojo sauce is great. You can taste the magic here at Voodoo Barbecue. Go to VoodooBBQ.com online. You want some chicken? You got it. You want to try some different sauces? You got it. Voodoo Barbecue has it all. Glad you've joined us here this evening for another edition of Sports Nola TV. Ken Trahan and welcome one and all. And as always, we break down the Saints. We'll talk about LSU and Tulane a little bit later in the show, along with Prep Sports with Tommy Chrysan of Pelican Sports Network and WUBR in Baton Rouge. And of course, we talk about the Saints first before we get into everything else. And we do so with our regulars, including Brian Ellie Walsh of SportsNola.com. Brian, good evening. Good evening, my friend. And I'll tell you what, it's always a pleasure to be here. And look at the state of Indiana. Notre Dame, number one, BCS standings. IU, number one in college basketball. Go IU, go Notre Dame. Where do you live? Yeah. I'm just Indiana. saying. Okay, all right. I'm just yeah. checking. But I'm I love saying. New Orleans. I love New Orleans. All right. Go right ahead. Always a pleasure to have former New Orleans Saints wide receiver Torrance Small with us. Torrance, good evening to you. How we're doing, Ken? Great to be back. But not so good for the black and gold. Went down this weekend. Hopefully we can uh, bounce back because we still have an opportunity, guys. Still have an opportunity. One guy that created a whole bunch of opportunities is our special guest here this evening. He played seven years with the Saints. He made four Pro Bowls here. He established all kinds of records, and now he's just watching them get broken virtually every week. How painful can that be? He would toot his own horn at times, but it was well-deserved because we tooted it for him as well. He's a great player and a great guy. Joe Horn, Saints Hall of Famer. Thanks for Good having me. Here, Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks yeah. for having yeah. me. And all the records that I have, they should get broken. Marcus yeah. is a great guy, very humble. I love him to death. And every record that he breaks, I'm, I'm proud of him. Very proud of him. Great barbecue yeah. place. You got some nice sauce too, though, don't you? I have some good sauce, going, but we're at Voodoo Barbecue right now. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna leave that alone. And we'll, we'll, everybody knows about my barbecue yeah. sauce. We'll, we'll we'll talk about we'll keep talking about uh, Voodoo. That barbecue. is a class act, okay? Where's Tyrone Hughes when you need him, right? I don't know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Ricky would be proud, too. He's Joe Horn. I'm Ken Torrance. Brian, we're glad you joined us for Sports Noah TV. When we return in just a moment, we'll take a look at the highlights, the lowlights, break it down, the Saints and the 49ers, when Sports Noah TV continues from Voodoo Barbecue and Grill in Menory. throw two pick sixes in a game you're not going to win the numbers don't lie the Saints never have Ken Trahan Sports Nola TV from Voodoo Barbecue on Severn and Metairie where the food's great and the company's better Saints five and six still in the playoff chase more on that coming up and let's talk about the game Brian first and foremost Saints got whipped up front uh, that's no surprise. San Francisco defensively is the best in the NFL, in my estimation, and they showed it yesterday. And I'll tell you what, I agree totally with you. If you're looking for a front runner to come out of the NFC this year, San Francisco won me over last night. Uh, the, the kind of defense that they played against the Saints, it was stout. Uh, I'm surprised that they didn't put more pressure on for longer periods of time than just in the fourth quarter, you know? With their front seven, it's as good as front seven in football, and Whitmer in the back makes them a solid 11. Well, they crush people in the secondary. And Torrance, I think, by and large, the reason they didn't get after Breeze as much earlier is the Saints were trying to have balance. They were trying to run the football. And they did so to at least keep them honest. They weren't able to do that in the fourth quarter. Yes, once we had got behind, it put us in trouble. It put us where we had to pass. And they had the Smith boys just coming off the end full speed. We had no answer for it. We're, we're injured on the, um, on the defensive tackle, uh, I mean, offensive tackles right now. So a lot, of, a lot of injuries on that offensive line. And with that type of defense coming at you, it's tough to win any ball game. Joe, when you get down to your fourth right tackle, fourth right. strength right. against a defense like that, right. you're in deep trouble. Well, I saw the best defense in my estimation last night with the New York Giants. I don't think San Francisco has the best defense. I think the New York Giants has the best defense, and I saw that last night against the Green Bay Packers. 
Uh, but I do think San Francisco have a pretty good defense. But the New Orleans Saints offensive line is banged up, and, and you know that in the fourth quarter, that's when San Francisco started adding pressure to, pressure to Drew Brees. So I, I don't want to give them too much credit right now because they beat the Saints because that offensive line is very banged up. I think the New York Giants defense. I think is the 49ers than that. and Giants defensive lines are comparable. I'd make the <laughs> right. argument that the Giants could be better there, but the 49ers are clearly better at linebacker, linebacker. Than, than, yeah. the, than the Giants are. I mean, clearly. Patrick Willis is the best in the league, and Ahmad Brooks is terrific. Right, right. They pour it on. The Giants pour it on, though, when it's playoff time. And I think Coach Harbaugh, he's a great coach, but you like Tony Dungy handed uh, Coach Gruden that football team. And I think Mike Singletary handed that football team to Coach Harbaugh. Now you have to win a Super Bowl, and I just don't think you can win a Super Bowl with a rookie quarterback. You know, Joe and Kenny and, and T, I, I, I'm not ready to put the Saints defense in the same breath with the teams you just mentioned, but if you'd have told us that the Saints would allow 375 yards and Vernon Davis doesn't catch a pass, I would say the Saints got a pretty good chance of winning. Had, should have had a chance you know? to win. But it's, it's, it's hard to recover, guys. It's hard to recover when you throw two picks for six. When you throw two picks for six, it's just hard. That's 14 points swing, and it's just hard to come back from that, especially when you have a team like the 49ers on defense. Joe, you looked at, the, you watch receivers I know all the time. You saw Marcus get crushed on a ball that's a little high. You saw Lance Moore get punished from behind, and he got, he got knocked out pretty much. Uh, they really punish the Saints receivers. That has a residual, doesn't it? Doesn't it carry over two degrees as the game goes on? Well, somewhat, somewhat. I know Marcus wish, wish he could have had that play back. But it happens in the game sometimes. Um, I know Drew wish he could have had those two picks back, but it happens. But I wasn't that much down on the Saints because I thought uh, San Francisco was going to come in on offense. I kept hearing about this great quarterback that they had. I thought they were going to come in on offense and put a lot of points on the board. And they, did, they didn't do that well, and their defense carried them over. Their offense doesn't need to be great. It just needs to be efficient with that defense that they have and the kicking game that they have. Right. I think, well, uh, I, I'll, say this, I'll say this again. I'm going to always go back to... Coach Harbaugh, if he wants to win a Super Bowl with that team, you don't want to come in as a coach and say, I give me five years and I want a Super Bowl. He wants to win a Super Bowl now because he has the talent to win a Super Bowl. And if you don't do that, I, don't, I just don't think you can do that with a rookie quarterback. I just don't. I know, I know we're, not talk, we're not talking about quarterbacks now, but it's going to lead to that, to that conversation. And I just don't think you can trust an inexperienced quarterback to take, take your team over. And that defense won't win you a Super Bowl. You have to have an offense to put up Brian, some points. Brian, the, Saint, the Saints tried to run the football. Really, nobody does on San Francisco. They did so with modest success. That said, again, Chris Ivory averages over four yards a carry, 4.3 a tote. Ingram's just over two. I mean, again, everybody continues to bring it up. Why isn't Chris Ivory getting more carries and being the primary guy in this offense? I agree totally. And, and you know, the, the person that has vanished from the whole running game is Pierre, Pierre Thomas. Thomas. As we predicted, he yeah, as, yeah, And you know what? But there's only one ball to go around. Correct. And, Chris Ivory and, and Mark Ingram, Mark Ingram, as long as he continues to run like he does, and Chris Ivory's the beast that he is. What I liked a little bit about the Saints last night, gentlemen, is that they stayed with the run a little bit longer than they have in the past. I would have liked to have seen them stay even longer with it because they were still in this game. When they got it to 28-21, I thought they panicked just a little bit. I, I wouldn't say they, they, they panicked. It's just, it's just they couldn't get anything going. The defense, uh, 49ers defense started cranking it up a little bit more. I think that's what happened, and they put us in passing situation, and we got a few penalties that, uh, that, that moved us back that put us in a little, little bad situation. But other than that, the 49ers control the ball up front, and up front is where we lost it by not having some of our offensive linemen because due to injuries, hey, that's what happened to us. Joe, you played here for Peyton for one year. You guys weren't the greatest of friends at the time. Now you guys have a really good relationship, and I want the public to know that. Because I think it's important, and it says something about the character of the individuals. I know you respect him and think he's a great coach. And you made a point at the New Orleans Quarterback Club that you felt like if Peyton was here, maybe the distribution of the ball would be different for these running backs, and maybe we would see one guy perhaps getting the ball a little bit more. Explain that if you will. Well, well, first of all, um, Coach Peyton, I respect, with all honesty. That's water under the bridge. Our relationship is in the past with the negative way with, with, that we had with one another. But him being here, him being here. It puts, it puts the running back situation into perspective. He can put those guys in different situations to make plays, and that's why he has four great running backs. Um, Drew Brees, if he throws it 60 times and he throws for 400 yards, five touchdowns, he's, he's, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Everybody loves it. But when, when they lose the game, they say, Drew, should, we should run the ball more. Um, with the quarterback like Drew Brees, to me, the best quarterback in the NFL, um, he has to throw the ball. So 
the, with the running back situation there, it's hard to let these guys put them in and out the game and, 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 and make a decision whether you should run the ball more. I'm a receiver. I, th I thought he should have threw it more. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what he's saying, Brian, they've got too many running backs. Well, they do. And you know what? And we've said this is one of these age-old uh, debates, I guess, with, with Sean Payton. And it's still Sean Payton's team. The packages are such that you've got to work in a lot of different running backs. And you can't, there isn't a featured running back. I think they've had six or seven different running backs lead the team in rushing the last six or seven years. Yeah. And it's going to be the same case th again this year. And, Torrance, here's how I know the 49ers are really good on defense. Darren Sproles makes people miss all the time in space. He didn't make anybody miss in space yesterday. No. This is what makes this defense uh, a great defense. And this is why I think they're a little better than the Giants because they, ta they tackle better in space. When these guys get their arms around you, they wrap up. If you look at most of their defensive players, they're not just hitting with the big hit. They're coming and they're wrapping up, and they're making sure you get to the ground before they let you go. I'll tell you what, if, if Malcolm Jenkins and Roman Harper ought to watch the way Whitner tackles, they okay? wrap up. Those they wrap up. up. They, they, not only do they bring the thunder, they wrap up when Absolutely. they bring the thunder. Absolutely. Did these guys beat the Giants last year? Same no. defense? did not. Oh. Good, 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 good. It, it, it all it, it counts when the playoff yeah. comes. Yeah. I think the New York Giants and that coach knows when to play, yeah. and he makes his players on that yeah. defense play better. San Francisco 49ers, they have yet to prove that. They have to okay. prove but, that. But, but and with I, the Saints, I agree. They've yet to prove in the yes. postseason, yes. but I think they yesterday won't chance. prove that. Yeah, but One this, more this time, this <laughs> and the Giants have to be more <laughs> consistent to win me over this year, although I want to see the Giants win because mm -hmm. we love Eli Manning, and I have a lot of respect for Tom Coughlin. We'll see. We owe you a break. When we return in just a moment, we'll take a trip around the NFL and get the guys' takes as Sports Nola TV continues from Voodoo Barbecue and Grill. Our Sports Nola TV trivia question of the evening. The Saints play at Atlanta Thursday night. That's right, short week, Thursday night in the Georgia Dome. Our question, how many Thursday regular season games have the Saints played in their entire history? You have four choices, two, four, six, and eight. Who do we appreciate? Joe Horn, that's who, no, okay. So think about it. We'll give you the answer a little bit later in the show. Two, four, six, or eight Thursday night game, Saints in Atlanta, and a rematch game this Thursday night. One that Joe can appreciate got a sneaky feeling he'll probably be there. Saints and the Falcons Thursday night. Ken Trahan, Sports Nola TV from Voodoo Barbecue and Grill and Metairie on Severn. Come on by and sample the outstanding drinks, the outstanding food, and the great company here at Voodoo Barbecue and Grill. Time to take a look around the NFL and what happened this past weekend. Let's review some of the scores. All right, here we go. Of course, it was Houston over Detroit overtime. What a great game on Thanksgiving Day that was. Washington on Thanksgiving dismissed the Cowboys, and New England on Thanksgiving night took down the hapless Jets. Elsewhere, the Chicago Bears rebounded as they got their quarterback back, and their defense played well and whipped the Vikings 28-10. Cincinnati rolls on. They're looking good. Beat hapless Oakland 34-10. Cleveland beat Pittsburgh 20-14. Eight turnovers for the Steelers. Please bring back Big Ben. Indianapolis rebounded nicely, beat Buffalo 20-13. Jacksonville, big win over Tennessee, 24-19. Denver played defense, they can do that. And Peyton Manning threw a couple of touchdowns, they beat Kansas City 17 tonight. Miami helped the Saints, they beat Seattle 24-21. And now Seattle's faced with both starting cornerbacks being done for a while. More on that coming up. Atlanta edged Tampa Bay 24-23. In overtime, Baltimore 16-13 over San Diego in an improbable win there. St. Louis whipped Arizona 31-17, and Joe Horn's Giants all over the Packers last night, 38-10. What a great game tonight coming up shortly. Uh, no, maybe not. Uh, Carolina and Philadelphia. Okay. All right, let's take a look around this league, Brian, and get our takes about what impressed you the most? First of all, what did you see that impressed you the most? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I thought that the Packers would have a hard time going to MetLife Stadium and, and winning, but I didn't think they'd get blown out. And, and the word that, that Aaron Rodgers used was embarrassed, you know, and that's exactly what they were. I'm not sure that there's that 28-point discrepancy between your Giants and the <laughs> Packers, but I'll tell you what, it was last night, and, and Eli Manning came back as what he said, a refreshed arm. So. The way they beat him surprised me. Torrance? 
Oh, I, I, I like to go to the um, Redskins, RG3. RG3. This guy here is lighting it up this year, having a great year. You, you kind of look at his season, and some people take the losses and think he's going up and down, but this guy's been playing pretty consistent all year. You look at his touchdown to interception ratio, he's playing very well. His completion, uh, completion percentage is great. He's, dry, uh, he's leading that team. He's a great captain. I'm looking for more of him. Joe? I like to go to the AFC. A lot of people are talking about the Ravens, Pittsburgh, uh, Big Ben, but Cincinnati is very impressive, and, and, and Coach Lewis is doing a great, great job down there. Look out for Cincinnati. Well, they're playing defense, and Andy Dalton's starting to play very well, and that's a dangerous combination. For me, I just look to Atlanta and Houston. Look, they just find ways to win, and it's all about winning, and they keep winning, and they both have just one loss, and that's pretty impressive. But to me, the most impressive win, the Giants were really good, but the most impressive win was the San Francisco 49ers coming to New Orleans, going indoors, traveling a long way against a team that was loaded for bear and beating them. So very impressive uh, through what they did last night. And as a result, let's now take a look at standings in the NFC South. The Falcons running away and hiding at 10-1 and one after holding off Tampa Bay. The Bucs are still a game ahead of the Saints, who are still positioned for that sixth spot. Let's not lose sight of that. Carolina is at 2-8. and eight. So, Brian, Tampa Bay gets beat. Seattle gets beat. Minnesota gets beat. Even though the Saints lose, they really don't lose ground for that sixth spot. Yeah, and you know what? It's, it's a shame because I, in bringing that to the attention of Malcolm Jenkins after the game, that they squandered an opportunity. Do you realize 0-4 start? Had they won yesterday, had they beaten Frisco, they would have been the number six seed even with because of the tiebreaker. That's how close this race is right now. So they didn't lose any ground. No, they didn't. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the playoff picture. And, see where we're at here. The Falcons in the one spot, 49ers, Bears, and Giants. Then the Packers at five. Seattle is the sixth at six and five. And Torrance, their two starting quarterbacks apparently are going to be suspended for four games for substance usage that they apparently shouldn't have used. They're really big, if you've ever seen their defensive backs. Yes. And apparently, we know why now. So yeah. that's six, not going to help their cause, right? Six, three, six, four. They'll be without. That's, uh, that's, that, that can hurt Seattle a lot. It'd be helpful for the Saints. We, we, we didn't lose ground, but we did. We lose some time. We lose some time. We lose, we lose a game, and um, a game that may, you may need at the end of the season. When it comes to you need just that one more win or so. So I don't look at it as, you know, they didn't lose ground as much because everybody else lost, but you did lose a, a great opportunity to take advantage of. And, Joe, they still play. The Saints still play Dallas, still play Tampa Bay. Teams are competing with Absolutely. for that final spot. They've still got Atlanta, obviously, coming up on. Thursday night, so they have a chance still to control this thing. Well, you will not get Drew Brees to make those mistakes that he made against San Francisco. Drew won't throw those those, those picks um, on one of those picks. He, he, will, he will not do that in the next upcoming weeks, and and that's what got San Francisco ahead. That was a big momentum change with those two picks, and I, that you will not see that happen in the next couple of weeks. Well, I'll tell you what. I agree with you. I mean, Drew Brees is Drew Brees, but they need to get somebody solid back at right tackle. For the remaining stretch. What do you do? Really you got to come well, back and play on Thursday. Oh, I, I know. Do your job. I don't know if that's any better. Probably right, exactly. by Thursday. I know. Okay, They're in trouble from now, that position. Now, the one thing you can you can design to get them some help. They can design to get them some help with a chip from a um, tight end or a chip from a running back to give a little help, or get the ball off quick or work the play action. That means the running game has to be on point against Atlanta this, this uh, Thursday, or it will be problems. Means one less receiver in the route, Joe. You got to keep somebody in. Well, right? that's why it's good. I love, I love Vic, Coach V. Well, that's why it's good, and, and they're missing Coach Payton right now. But that decision that's made, whoever it is, whether, whether it's a guy that's in the locker room or off the street, you have to do your job, just like the man said. Real quick. You know, the one thing that the Saints have going for them is the Atlanta defense isn't anything like San Francisco's defense, so they don't have no. to deal with that. No, However, exactly. they still have to get solid play out of that right tackle. Yes. When we return in just a moment, Brian's on the hot seat. Should a starter lose his job when hurt? Stay tuned. A spirited debate when Sports Noah TV continues. Our Sports NOLA trivia question of the evening. One more time. The Saints play in Atlanta Thursday night. How many Thursday regular season games have the Saints played in franchise history? Is it two, four, six, or eight? The correct answer is six. 
and the Saints are three and three all time on Thursday. So a chance to go over 500 against the Falcons in the Georgia Dome this coming Thursday night. Ken Trahan, Sports Noah TV. Glad you've joined us at Voodoo Barbecue and Grill. Taste the magic here on Severn Avenue in Metairie. Time now for our hot seat segment where we place Brian Alley Walsh, who appropriately is hot and red this evening on the hot seat with a topic of interest. And tonight, our debate is all about starters. Should a starter lose his job when hurt? Or can a starter lose his job when hurt? Look at it either way. Let's have a heated debate. Brian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ken. I think it will be a heated debate this evening. Uh, in my opinion, it, it depends on situations. But I think the reason for this topic is because of what the 49ers did with Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh sat Alex Smith because of concussion-like symptoms. Uh, he missed the Bears game. He was still not cleared to, to practice midweek. Uh, Colin Kaepernick comes in and does a fantastic job against Chicago in the one game that he played in, in, in uh, Alex Smith's absence. Jim Harbaugh says he's got two quarterbacks with hot hands. Now, from what I understand, the coach never promised anybody, Harbaugh never promised anybody in the 49ers that, that they were going to keep their job or they would lose their job because of an injury. In my opinion, I think Jim Harbaugh did a smart thing. There's no doubt that Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick is the guy, the quarterback of the future. I think Harbaugh sees that if they're going to win the Super Bowl, and that's their, that's their uh, goal this season, that Kaepernick gives them the best chance. That's not to, it's not to diminish what Alex Smith did or has done for a year and a half. But Kaepernick is the guy, the quarterback of the future. And the last time I looked, there's, you know, the players aren't entitled to keep their jobs if they are injured. You know, he's probably going to be given a chance to perhaps win it. If not, that's too bad. He's still going to make a handsome salary, and that's the way it is. And I think Harbaugh has positioned himself to go, let's go win it with Colin Kaepernick. Normally I jump on you, but my, 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 my good friend here is sitting here steaming to jump on this. <laughs> steaming. I mean, just steam. Go ahead. You have my permission. I, I don't agree. The last, oh, you don't, huh? The last, the last game I, I saw that mattered was when Alex Smith drove down the field to beat the Saints in the playoffs. And the experience is what's happening in the NFL. You have to have experience. If you go with a young kid like this kid and you expect for him to come and win you a Super Bowl, when you have to win the Super Bowl, Super Bowl with the talent that you have, I think it's a bad decision. I think Alex Smith, Smith is back now. His concussion is gone. He, 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 he marched down the field and won you a playoff game against a team that could have been in the Super Bowl last year. And you just don't leave him on the sideline with the amount of money that you're paying him. Now, if he played terrible before he got hurt, then I agree Then you maybe should make the younger guy give him an opportunity. But I think Alex Smith should have his job back in a la Green Bay Packers, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, you wait, son, till it's your turn, and when he's gone, then we'll bring you in and we'll let you lead this franchise. And I agree, I agree. like a true player. <laughs> I agree with Joe. Oh, did you start to surprise? Let's look at this. Again, the guy did not, he wasn't playing bad. He was winning ball games. Why sit him? I understand he had a concussion. I understand he had some symptoms and all. But he was able to come back and play this game. I thought he should have played this game because later on in the season, it's going to become to experience. And that's the one thing Joe was talking about. I don't think uh, Kaepernick has enough experience when it comes to play all time and come to those games when they really need him. He hasn't been there. Alex Smith been there last year. He understands. He was a little bit more hungry. He has a little bit more experience. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you on this here. I definitely think they should have stayed with the hotter, uh, not the hotter hand, but definitely stayed with Alex Smith. And he didn't play lights out. Well, exactly. Like this guy he did. Yes, he's, he's, exactly. Wait a minute. If it Jesus. wouldn't have been for the picks, you, we, we wouldn't are be the, talking about this. Are the 49ers 2-0 and with Colin Kaepernick under center? 2-0? Yeah. They, 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 the beat Chicago, the they beat Chicago, which with is what? the number one NFL with, defense, with, with, right? With the offense or the defense? Huh? I'm just saying, did Kaepernick have a good game? The, did they beat him with the defense? Did they come and beat the did Saints they beat him with in the their place? Or the defense? That's, that's two and zero. Oh. How, how many playoff games? How many playoff games did he play? But look, look. All right, can I just get one? No, con, no. one good word in here, and then, then all right. Look, it's a good time to if you're going to make this move. All right, that mm -hmm. Jim Harbaugh is doing. Why not give him six games under center? If this is the guy that you think will take you deep into the playoffs, win you a Super Bowl. 
this is the time to do it now. I, I don't think. I think Joe. he's a great young quarterback. If I'm the head coach, I think he's a great young quarterback. I will give him his opportunity. But right now, Alex is our guy. He's been there before. I have to go with experience with this team because I need to bring a Super Bowl to the San Francisco organization. And we, I just don't trust right now that the young guy has it right now. And I'm bringing my starter back in. Exactly. Now, now the real gavel comes because the judge <laughs> will speak. I do think that every situation is individual. I do not think that a starter should lose his job when injured if that starter is a solid player. The question here is clearly if you're applying it to the 49ers, is Alex Smith? Is he a solid player? I would say that Alex Smith is a solid player. I would not say that he's an excellent player, but he is a solid player. He brought the 49ers to within one or two plays of the Super Bowl a year ago. And it's right. What he did accomplish against the Saints last year was special. Not just one drive, but two drives in the final minutes of the game to win a spectacular victory for the 49ers and keep the Saints from winning a second Super Bowl because they would have won a second Super Bowl. So Alex Smith deserves kudos. That said, in this particular circumstance, it is obvious that Jim Harbaugh wants to move on from Alex Smith. He tried everything he possibly could to get Peyton Manning in the offseason and couldn't quite persuade him to do it. So clearly this is about a coach hanging his hat on another guy. And there's no doubt in my mind that Jim Harbaugh has made up his mind that Colin Kaepernick is his guy moving forward. As Joe rightfully says, is this the time to do it to win a Super Bowl? In the middle of a season or in the latter stages of a season to get him ready to try to win a Super Bowl this year? Uh, that's debatable because if it's prior to the season, I'd support it 100%. You're going with a younger guy, let him go into the job. By the time the playoffs come around, maybe he's that guy. Can that be the case in this short a period of time? Listen, it remains to be seen. I thought Colin Kaepernick played pretty well. I didn't think he was anything special. The one thing he does do is move very well. He buys time, and that certainly helps. But Alex Smith has mobility, too. So I don't know that there's a great differential there. Ultimately, it's up to the coach. If he feels like one guy has the it factor and the other doesn't, then clearly he's going to make that move. I clearly think that that's what Jim Harbaugh thinks about Colin Kaepernick. And as Joe suggested, he's kind of hung his hat on that because the 49ers opportunity is now they have a great defense their offense is good enough but okay they haven't really gotten any better Randy Moss what's he added to this team nothing really Vernon Davis not as much as he did last year Crabtree is Crabtree he's okay you can go over their wide receivers nothing special although the Saints made Delaney Walker look pretty good in that game yesterday bottom line is this in my mind a starter that's earned his job that's done a very good job should not lose his job based upon the fact that he got hurt. Unless you have somebody come along that is undeniably terrific. Can you say Lou Gehrig? I don't know that we're talking Lou Gehrig here when it comes to Colin Kaepernick. My take. SportsNola.com, best place to go on the web. You wanna go there? You can always go there, check out everything there, and you can follow us on Twitter at SportsNola and at Facebook at SportsNola. Dot com. You want to do it. You will enjoy it. You'll find great information all the time, and we'll be glad to answer any questions that you have at SportsNola.com. Joe Horn, Saints Hall of Famer. It has been a pleasure having you, you with us, my Thanks friend. For having me. Always Pleasure great to visit man. with you. you. And uh, keep up the great work. <laughs> and he does have good sauce, by the way. But he's a good man in town to take care of a Make-A-Wish Foundation child, too. God bless Absolutely. you, Joe. God bless you. Thank you We'll so take much. a time out when we return. Tommy Chrysan joins us on SportsNola TV. Slash Sports Nola. It's Movember. Stay in a healthy way, manage your stress, drink alcohol only in moderation, sleep well, keep smiling. Mobro.co slash Sports Nola. Hey, I want to check out the progress of our Sports Nola TV production team and their <laughs> Mobros. What do you think? Thumbs down, <laughs> thumbs up. It's a good thing That's the camera, good, good thing. camera isn't good on thing. you guys right now. That's all I can tell you. We'd rather you not see. What our guys think, but actually it's pretty good. It's for a great cause, mobro.co slash sportsnola. Ken Trahan, thanks to Joe Horn for joining us again. And we turn our attention to college and prep. And to do so, we do so with a good friend, contributor to sportsnola.com from WUBR 9, 10 a.m. in Baton Rouge and Pelican Sports Network, Tommy Chrysan. Tommy, it's great to have you with us. My pleasure to be here, Ken. Always fun to sit with you guys. Well, I mean, let's talk a little bit about college first and foremost. LSU, Arkansas, 
the Tigers going on the road, having to play in Fayetteville for the first time in quite some time and winning the game 20 to 13. Your impressions? Well, you know, LSU looked like they were sleepwalking a little bit. You know, Arkansas didn't have anything to play for whatsoever except senior day and a couple of things like that. But LSU tends to play down to their opponent or up to their opponent. Why? And they did. I don't know. That's one of them things I'm not smart enough to figure out. I mean, you would think trying to get to 10 wins enhance your chances for a possible BCS spot, which going into the game, there were still some chances of that. We now know that there were not. But, you know, 10 wins, there's a lot of college football teams that wish they won 10 games, uh, you know, during the course of the season. And, and under Coach Miles, they continue to do it. They've struggled with Arkansas over the years. That was no surprise. I, I thought there would be a bigger gap in the victory. But, you know, Arkansas did okay in spots, but uh, LSU separated at the end. Mississippi State had just hammered Arkansas. I know. That's why I thought LSU should go in and really just hammer them as well. On the other hand, 10 wins. You cannot deny that. Sixth time in eight years under Les Miles, they've won at least 10 games. Well, and he's won, He's 85-20 and 20 as head coach at LSU. I, I've said on the radio, if you put a 1,000 LSU fans in a room eight years ago and said, this coach we just hired is about to win 85 games, two SEC titles, and a national title, how many of you, if you don't like that, leave the room, nobody would have left the room. No style points, Torrance, so they drop a spot in the eight people from eight to nine even though they won <laughs> yes it, it, the thing is in the um, AP poll and all right now it's the top four <laughs> the top we're the top three really because right now you have uh, Notre Dame they won so they're waiting to see who's going to win out of SEC to see who's going to play for the national championship right now the other other teams are just hoping to be in the BCS game well let's take a look at the BCS standings as a result of what happened this past weekend to give you some perspective and it really is all about three teams Notre Dame Alabama, Georgia, the winner of Alabama, Georgia, Tommy, will play Notre Dame for the national championship. I think Georgia's going to win that game. I think they have more talent on defense than Alabama. This Alabama team, very good, not as good as last year's Alabama team. And I think Georgia and Aaron Murray and the running back that they have, it's in Atlanta. Yeah, it's supposed to be half and half on the crowd, but there will be a lot of Bulldog fans in there, and I think Georgia wins that game. Do you think that if Alabama lose, you think they will go ahead of Florida and be able to get in that BCS game? Depends on how much they lose by. If it's, you know, 20 to 17, 17, 14, I think Bama will stay up there. If Georgia puts it to them, then I think Florida would go ahead of Alabama into the BCS slot. Vice versa. And Florida, Brian, they're clearly in the BCS. It looks like they'll be coming to New Orleans. It looks like they'll be in the Sugar Bowl. I'll tell you, that was a huge win against Florida State. That, that really uh, surprised me a little bit, the way they manhandled them in Tallahassee. You know, Tommy, I'm curious, where, you, where do you think LSU is going to ultimately end up in bowl? I think it's either the Chick-fil-A Bowl or New Year's Eve or it's the Outback Bowl. And I think they'd like to put them against Michigan, have the Les Miles against his Alabama Miles yeah. story going. I think it's one of those two. I think the Cotton Bowl is out of the picture. And Capital One Bowl would take Georgia if Georgia lost or Alabama if they lost. Uh, They'd be curious to see if LSU sells tickets like they always have because right after that Alabama game this year, that whole town kind of flattened out. All the radio shows, all the TV shows in Baton Rouge, it was almost like fans gave up, you know, even though there was still a chance for a 10-win season, which they accomplished, and a big-time bowl, which they'll fall a little short of the big-time bowl thing now, but you didn't know that then. So I think they flattened out, and I just don't know that they'll travel, as they say, which is the important thing in the bowl games, as well as they have in years past. So you're looking at... LSU Michigan or LSU Clemson, either right. way, a pretty good matchup. And one's indoors, good situation in the Georgia Dome. The other one, you're at the mercy of the elements. But it would be against Michigan, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be a big storyline. You know, Les Miles just referring to his career in Michigan last week and his little tirade after the game against Ole Miss. But, you know, that, that would be a, a story that everybody would pick up on, and that would be part of it. But, you know, and I, and I don't know that Miles, he's all for that or not. He's not that kind of guy. But, uh, that's where I think LSU's headed, right? One of those two places, and that, that's not what you wanted when they were ranked number one back in August, yeah. that you thought they would end up in Atlanta or Tampa on January 1st. You know, but then again, I mean, Notre Dame wasn't even ranked, and they're four quarters away from a national title. You know, Tommy, this is the knock against the, the championship game, is that, you know, it kind of eliminates or uh, diminishes all these other bowls, you know? Uh, now, now you're talking about LSU playing it, it, you know, if they're not in the BCS game, it kind of diminishes the importance of these other bowls, and this is the big thing that 
that they are scared of, I think, some of these bowl situations. Well, a couple of things on that. I think they should have went to the playoff system right away. Yeah. I realize yeah. there were TV contracts and all that, but if the city and the Wallace can move a Super Bowl by a week one year like they did because of 9-11, <laughs> you yeah. can change a TV contract with some bowl games, okay? Yeah. And the other thing, I think, you know, y'all might fall off the chair here, but I think this BCS championship game should be played around December the 20th mm -hmm. and let the rest of the bowls play out because nobody they're going to get the same attention. But Notre Dame will have to wait 46 days, yeah. I believe. Yeah. It is. That is a long time. Play. It's like a different and, season. And, and the winner of the Bama point. Georgia game yeah. is only yeah. six days less than that. Sure. And, and is that a true measure yeah. of what would be the best team that night? I say line them up, play them December 20th, 21st, yeah. let them play, and then all the other bowl games, they'll get the same attention. I really believe that. Tulane finished up its season at 2 and 10. The Green Wave went to Houston, and they lost 40 to 17. The turnovers were the story here. Ryan Griffin. Uh, threw for a lot of yards again. They can't run the ball and they really can't stop people. And they finished two and ten, Brian. And obviously, the, it's all about the future. It really is. Now, if Curtis Johnson turns his attention to, to recruiting, he's going to need at least two, three good classes, I think, to build this team up. Yeah. Uh, it, it just makes you make, makes you realize the importance of having a good leadership at quarterback all season long. Turning it, our attention to high school football, another one that's right in Tommy's hitting zone. Our New Orleans Quarterback Club, SportsNola.com, WGSO 990 AM Prep Player of the Week in the metro area for Week 13, quarterfinal week. It's quarterback Glenn Pouillet, Jr. from Mandeville. He's 6'1", 205. He did it both ways, 19-34, 317 yards, two touchdowns passing. And he rushed for 69 yards and two touchdowns to lead the skippers over Catholic High 28-21. And they will play Rumble in the 5A semifinals this coming Friday night. So with that, let's take a look at the matchups. In the semifinals, okay, Tommy, it's all yours. Mandeville Rumble, West Monroe Barb at 5A. What do you think? Well, I mean, you almost got the chalk there, except Mandeville Skippers uh, slipping in, and they'll have to travel into Jefferson Parish. Uh, but, you know, they beat a good Catholic high team last week and played defense and scored some points. And, you know, that'll be a really good matchup. West Monroe Barb, they've played before in the playoffs. They know exactly what each other's going to do. Uh, Coach Childs, Coach Shaver have both been there forever. McDonough 35, one of the stories of the year. Coach Reese has done a super job with that program for a long time. I'm glad to see him having this success against Neville. Holy Cross place I went for a few years back in the 70s and graduated <laughs> from back in the, the, where they haven't been in for, since before I was at Holy Cross. <laughs> and of course, Coach Jaluki at Carr does a great job. There will be standing room only at Berman Stadium that night. Livonia, Coach David Brewerton has been building that program for years, but he's got probably one of the best teams in the state. You can throw out all the classifications. Parkview Baptist is a machine. 2A, Springfield's a good story. You got the chalk, one, two, three, four there. You got to think John Curtis is uh, got going to win it again, but don't count out University High. There's a lot of talent, a lot of D1 players playing for University High to Baton Rouge. And then, I, I don't know, I like Robert Valdez and West St. John. They played a tough schedule earlier in the year. They're better than their record indicates. They could be there at the end. Yeah, and Wash Talk Christian Kenwood will be a good game as well. We'll take a time out here. When we return in just a moment, we'll get our thoughts about the Saints upcoming game with the Falcons from our panel on Sports NOLA TV. Voodoo Barbecue and Grill, 2740 Severn Avenue in Metairie. The phone number right there. Taste our magic. Go to VoodooBBQ.com and check out the outstanding menu and sauces here at Voodoo Barbecue and Grill here in Metairie on Severn Avenue. Hope you will. Know you'll love it. Ken Trahan, Sports Nola TV, the Saints and the Falcons. Thursday night, Georgia Dome. Brian, Saints have to win this game. What do you think? Uh, I, I like the Saints' chance. I think the Saints are in Atlanta's head. Uh, they're 11 and 2 since Sean Payton, Drew Brees have come on board. And wouldn't it be something they, they ended Atlanta's winning streak at eight games with a win in the dome? Atlanta's 5 and 0 in the Georgia Dome, and they've got a good shot to end their home winning streak this year as well. Hey, guess what? I'm with you on that. Right. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Hey, like he said. 11-2 over the last 13 games against Atlanta. I think we just have their number. They say it's a rival. I don't see how. 11-2, big difference. Doesn't seem much like a rivalry to me. Saints know they still have an opportunity. They still have life. I think they're going to come out uh, with some momentum. 
Tommy? I think Atlanta wins the game. Torrance, you played in the league. It's tough to beat somebody twice it in is. a four-week window. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very tough to do. I think Atlanta at home, you know, they got away with one against mm -hmm. Tampa. I, I think they're just going to have – it'll be their turn to, to tip that scale a little bit and win a game. I hope yes. Brian and Torrance are right, but I'm with Tommy. I think Atlanta wins a game, and I think it's a competitive game. It'll pretty much crush the Saints' chances if that happens, but it's tough in four days. Where are you going to find a right tackle, by the way? Saints' mm -hmm. upcoming schedule is a pretty daunting one. Not just the Falcons, but then it's to Joe Horn's New York Giants. <laughs> We're pretty good. Then Tampa Bay, they're pretty good coming in here. And then not easy at Dallas, Brian. That's a very challenging schedule. Yeah, I'll tell you what, and I'm, I'm in total agreement with you. You know, we've said for so many weeks now it's a must win. They have to beat Atlanta yep. to stay in the, in the yeah, chase. They, they, they can't have any more losses. Yeah. You know, you, nine and seven may get you into the playoffs. Anything less than that, you definitely out. Got to win at least three of those. And, well, and, and all four of those teams yeah. are playoff caliber teams yes. if you count the Cowboys in there, which they think they are. So, yeah. you know, they want to be. So by that yeah. time the Saints get them, they're either going to be in it or out of it. And if they are in it, that's four playoff caliber teams. I think the Saints are a playoff caliber team as well, but their back is to the wall. Yeah. Now, next Monday, we're at a special time at 5 p.m. with Sports Noah TV. That's 5 p.m. next Monday, only a special time. And our whole sports block moves up next week because that includes Tigers Roar. Tigers Roar, we, we, we tape it every week up in Baton Rouge. It's primarily LSU football, but we take a run around the state and talk about the other schools. It's uh, showing its sixth year now, and it's really doing well, and we appreciate the people watching it in New Orleans. Yeah, it's 5 p.m. this coming Friday. Uh, that's 5 p.m. next Friday, I should say, on WHNO, Tigers Roar, Tommy's show. Great job with Pelican Sports Network and WUBR in Baton Rouge. Tommy, it's been great having you with us. My pleasure. Always fun to be here great with you guys. Love to talk sports, yes. and you guys do, and we could probably sit here for days. Brian, as always, thank you, my friend. Torrance, hey, pleasure. stay yeah. vertical, great. my friend. Want to thank Lenny <laughs> and Adam and Joe yeah, really and the here. guys for being with us once more, and Voodoo Barbecue and Grill as well. Now, this is Ken Trahan saying thanks for joining us, and be a good sport. God bless you one and all. So long.